One of the keys in producing high quality crystal clear ice is using purified water. In order to produce the quality of water needed, a multi-phase solution should be incorporated. Here's where ordinary city water enters the first phase carbon filtration system. The water is then sent to the water softeners. After the softeners, the water enters pre-filters before being sent on to the Siemens Water Technology Reverse Osmosis System. The water is then pumped into a storage tank so that an ample supply of water is always available to the ice makers. But before the water is sent to the ice makers, it passes through an ultraviolet light chamber which destroys any residual bacteria that may remain. Once the water is purified, it is sent to the ice making system. The water is passed through a chiller manufactured by Turbo. The chiller is capable of bringing the temperature of the water to 34 degrees before it enters the ice makers. The ice makers shown are Vote P34 extended barrel tube ice machines. Each ice maker can produce 75 tons of ice per day. Once the machines harvest, ice is discharged into the collection screw. The collection screw incorporates a surge bin as well as a reversing screw to handle the large amount of ice discharged by each ice machine. The reversing screw moves the ice in the opposite direction of the discharge screw to better meter the amount of ice exiting the discharge opening at any one time. The collection screw moves the ice to a Matheson dewatering belt conveyor. The ice drops to a secondary dewatering belt conveyor before entering the shaker bed. The shaker bed separates the fines and snow from the quality baggable ice. Fines and snow are diverted into a melt tank for melting and disposal. This cool water is pumped back into the evaporative condensers, thus saving precious water resources. The ice then continues on to the drying system. The ice is still wet on its outer surface when it is harvested. If left in this condition, the wet ice cubes would freeze together creating an unmanageable, solid piece of ice. Removing all of the moisture from the ice before it is packaged and stored eliminates this problem. The ice is conveyed along two Matheson stainless steel mesh drying belts located in a separate freezer room, kept at about 5 degrees Fahrenheit. The ice is exposed not only to very cold temperatures, but extremely windy conditions as well, causing a wind chill factor, which additionally assists in the drying process.
The high airflow is achieved with multiple evaporators blowing from above and fans mounted underneath the belt, creating a swirling wind within the drying room. All moisture has been completely removed by the time the ice leaves the drying room. With stainless steel mesh belt conveyors and a high volume of air being circulated, a perfect environment is produced to flash freeze any remaining water left on the product, creating the perfect ice for packaging and delivery. Screw conveyors are used throughout the ice plant, conveying ice to the rake and other storage systems. High quality screw conveyor systems, like the ones provided by Matheson Equipment, start with a normal screw, which is then put through a process of cleaning, polishing, straightening, clocking, and adding other improvements, which meet modern's design requirements. In this example, an inclined screw conveyor is used to carry the ice from the drying belt up to a horizontal screw conveyor with a reversing motor. As each bin calls for ice, the reversing conveyor can deliver product to that bin. This bin rake system built by North Star offers a great deal of storage. Each bin shown here can store and handle 200 tons of raw product. This method of storing ice is very efficient and cost effective. The bin rake provides a sanitary environment for ice storage. All materials such as stainless steel and UHMW plastic used in this system are of food grade quality. After being discharged from the rake, the ice enters another inclined screw conveyor. Screw conveyors of this type are usually configured with a fractional pitch, shroud covers, and tracking strips to help move the ice more effectively up the conveyor and prevent rollback of product. The inclined screw conveyor moves the ice to the snow reel, manufactured by Matheson Equipment. In this process, the ice enters on one end and then spins as it travels through the snow reel. The outer wall of the snow reel is actually a wire screen, which allows the snow and fines to be removed from the ice before it is sent to a distribution hopper and then on to the packaging system. Just below the snow reel, a conveyor is used to remove the snow that exits the reel. This snow is sometimes used by block presses or sold to businesses that utilize it in their manufacturing processes. Unused snow is diverted to several tanks where it is melted. Several systems can be used to melt the snow. In this case, a glycol system is used to warm the snow. A heat exchanger, operating off the existing hot gas already available through the high side of the system, is used in other parts of the factory. Screw conveyors are used to transport the ice to an ice distribution hopper, which has multiple screw conveyors mounted underneath to feed the bagging lines. Multiple screw conveyors are fed ice by the distribution hopper, which then distributes ice to the packaging equipment down the line. Slide gates are placed at discharge locations along the packaging line and can be opened or closed depending on which packaging line is being utilized. 
To put the high quality ice in the bag, Modern incorporates the latest packaging machines manufactured by Hamer, Matheson, and JMC. In this facility, Hamer models 535, 1550, and 540 packaging machines are used. This equipment utilizes pre-printed bag roll stock, which is converted into a bag by the machine. As you can see, the bag gusset is actually formed by a special mechanism mounted just after the roll stock mount. The bag is created through a heat sealing process. The size of the roll stock can be changed when other weight packages need to be filled. The roll stock is pulled down the line and filled by the volumetric filling system, then sent on to be closed by the included heat sealing unit. Balers, such as those manufactured by JMC and Matheson, are used to nest multiple smaller bags into one master bale for ease of transport. As you can see, a device is mounted on the end of the conveyor, transitioning from the hammer packaging machine to the JMC baler being used here. This device flips the bags in the preferred direction for baling. A JMC Fuse Air 4 heat sealer is being utilized to seal the baled bags. Once the ice is baled, it is placed on pallets and stored, awaiting shipment. The cold storage room shown is built using prefabricated locking panels. These panels are assembled to construct a variety of sized and shaped rooms. Multiple rooms were constructed within the main structure to provide cold storage, cold and drying rooms. The entire plant is controlled by a central control panel with a micro relay system. Sensors are located throughout the plant detecting everything from high ice, low ice, non-functioning equipment, and hoppers that are too full. These sensors are constantly monitored by the central control panel. The panel starts and stops equipment as needed. A good example would include a sensor on the rake that will call for ice when low and send a signal to the ice machines to stop when full. This concludes our tour. Modern Ice can help you with your plant design or would like to discuss your ice manufacturing needs, please contact us. We will be looking forward to your call. Modern Ice, our organization is built on a simple philosophy, deliver exceptional service, on a very personal level.